Hey everybody, welcome back to another video in this sampling in Max series. So today we're on video two of the gen sort of sub-series of this series. In the first video, we built a pretty basic sampler based on an architecture that we had built in MSP. And now we're going to elaborate on that gen patch. So there's three things that we're going to do today. The first one is we're going to click fix a clicking issue, uh, which I'll demonstrate. You can hear each time I re-trigger that while it's playing, we get a little click because the waveform, as it goes from wherever it was when I hit the click button back to the beginning of the sample file, isn't smooth. So what we want to do basically is fade out really quickly right before it gets re-triggered and then fade back in. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is make it possible to select a region of the sample uh, and play only that section. And then the third thing is the ability to toggle between loop and one shot modes. Let's get started. So off the bat here, the first thing that we're going to do is the uh, click suppression. So like I said, what we'll do is just fade out uh, and then fade back in. Uh, and the way that we'll basically do this is first, we're going to build a ramp that goes from zero to two. Then we will fold that ramp at one so that it goes uh, from zero to one and then one to zero, and then we'll just flip it over so it goes from one down to zero and then back up to one. So let's build it. So we'll do a clip zero two here and we'll add a switch object. This is this part's gonna look a lot like what we have over here because all we're doing is making a little uh, ramp generator, little accumulator. We'll add a history in and we're gonna trigger that when we trigger a new sample. We're going to add a fold zero one to the output and then we're going to invert it. And then the slope of the line, I'm going to send this to the output so that we can see it, but the slope of that ramp is going to be uh, set by whatever, whatever value we pass into the first inlet of the clip object here. Um, and there's a few ways that we can think about this. The easiest perhaps is how long in milliseconds do we want these fade outs and fade ins to be? Um, a good value is about five milliseconds. So we can send a five through a ms to samps object, which is going to tell us how many samples is five milliseconds. And then if we want to know how much change in the signal value do we need to get from zero to one in five over that many samples, uh, we take one over that number of samples. So if we now uh, take a scope and connect it to the third outlet here, and just turn the sound off for a second, we can see we're getting this little, what looks like an impulse, but it's actually a really short ramp. If I make this something like, I don't know, 250 or 230, then you can see we're actually getting that nice ramp. So if I go back to five here, um, that's basically it, because all we're gonna do is multiply the output of the peak object by that little ramp signal. Uh, and then beyond that, the only other thing is we just need to make it so that rather than re-triggering sample playback immediately when the impulse comes into the first inlet here, we need to delay that until the fade out portion of our little envelope is complete. So the way that we'll do that is we'll basically detect is the ramp value being produced by this clip ramp thing greater than one. Uh, and if that state of being greater than oneness changes from not being greater than one to being greater than one, then all of this will give us a little impulse. And then we can, oh, we don't need a history. Um, then we can use that impulse to actually trigger the sample playback. So let's test it. Much less clicky. Sometimes you can hear a little bit of a something, but I'm going to call that a success. Great. So let's encapsulate this. And stick it over here. So that part's done. So now let's think about the sample region part. 
So basically what I'm going to want to do is get uh, two numbers, one that represents the beginning of the region and the other one that represents the end of the region. And I think probably the easiest thing to do would have those be normalized on the region of zero to one, uh, a bit like a percentage. So we'll call it start percent. The default's going to be zero and the maximum is going to be one. And then we'll do an end percent. Uh, which is defaulted to one with the same maximum and minimum. And then what we're gonna do is um, get the difference between the two of them. Because we wanna basically get what's the kind of length of that sample region so that we can generate a ramp over that region. And this ramp needs to be in samples. So what we're going to do is take that normalized number and multiply it by the length of the buffer in samples. So once we have that, now we're generating a ramp that is as long as the, di the distance between these two numbers, um, but it starts from zero. So we need to add an offset, which is going to be equal to the start position times the, um, the length of the buffer. And we're just going to add that to the output of the ramp. Uh, so now if we uh, select a region, which I can't do because the waveform object doesn't want to let me. So let me fix that. OK, so now we can generate some start and endpoint numbers. Ah, there we go. So these are in milliseconds. We need to convert these into the start percent and end percent uh, values. So what we can do is get from the info object the length of the buffer in milliseconds. And I'm just going to add to, or not add, but pack together the start and end values in MS. And then I'm going to divide them uh, by the length using this vexpr object, which basically allows us to do math on lists. And by default, it expects you to send in two lists that are the same length. But if you, most of the time when I'm using this, actually, I have just one number that I want to like multiply or add or divide by every item in a list. And so the way that you do that is with this scalar mode one uh, attribute. So I'm telling it. Divide every item in this list by this number that comes in over here. So if I reselect this and I get that to come through, and then I select a region, I'm now getting these like start percent and end percent values, and then I can just construct some messages to Jen. Uh, one little nice detail that's uh, good to do here is this thing called debouncing, which I learned that word uh, very recently from ChatGPT. Um, but basically, it's like uh, we don't really want the as I'm kind of scrolling for it to like you can hear like we're getting all kinds of crappy clicks. Um, so to prevent that, what we can do is basically tell it don't send anything until I'm actually done dragging around on here. So we'll do it like so. So we have a ZL reg. We're going to put the list into the ZL reg. And then we'll use a delay object, which not only delays bangs, but it also uh, like omits bangs that occur within the delay interval. So if I send this thing a bang, here, I'll, I'll show you a thousand milliseconds. If I bang, 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 I'm just going to get one a second after the last one. So I sent like a ton of bangs in here, but I only get one at the very end. And so we're kind of taking advantage of that capability, which is like if I send, if I change this thing a lot and I scroll around on it, nothing's actually going to get sent until I'm done zooming around on there. So just a nice way to kind of force the patch to be a little bit more predictable and work a little bit more nicely. All right, so that's cleaned up. Let's go back into Gen. So one thing that you could hear is, actually, why don't I just play it and we can test it.
So it's working. The only problem is that our red line isn't correct. And that's because uh, we're not passing the start offset to it. So we need to grab this. Cool. And you can see we're still getting some clicking when we change the region. And that's because we're sending these values that we, any new values immediately into the patch. What we want to do is kind of like delay the use of them. So we'll, what we'll say is, you know, only give us a new value when click fix says it's time to trigger a new sample. And actually the same goes for this latch over here. So now I can change the region, but nothing happens until I, uh, until I trigger a new sound. Great, so that's done. Let's do a little bit of cleanup. So finally here, we're going to do the loop. So the principle of what we want to do is basically when this ramp is done and looping is enabled, we want to trigger it again to start again. So we kind of detect, is this ramp done? If it is, we send a, an impulse around into the click fix, which just re-triggers it. And there's kind of a few ways to do that. We could like look at the slope of the line and see, is it zero? We could, you know, but after a little bit of kind of messing around with this, I found that the easiest is just to test and see is the uh, value that's coming out of the ramp, uh, is it equal to or greater than uh, the end point basically of the region. So we can get that end point like this and we can get the ramp position by just taking this sum here. And I'm just gonna pass it through a pass object which does nothing at all. It just allows us to get that number uh, with a single outlet there. So if that state changes and that state change is a state from being false to being true, then we'll get an impulse. Oops, sorry. And then we're going to want to add a mode uh, parameter to be able to turn the looping on and off. So zero is going to be off. Zero is going to be like one shot. Uh, loop is going to be one. So if looping is enabled and this impulse is coming through, then we'll get the impulse and we'll pass that around. So let's test it now. So I'm gonna create an outer UI for our mode, and I'm gonna put it in checkbox mode. I'm gonna turn this on and then... Not working, why? Ah. <laughs> Um, so a couple things that I noticed can be problems that are worth fixing. Uh, with the region, you kind of want to limit the minimum uh, length of the region. So let's say like we don't want to have the region be less than, I don't know, 100 samples. So we'll do that like that. So now, even if I select like a absolutely microscopic thing here, the shortest it can be is a hundred samples. Another thing is like the way it works right now is if it's looping and I select a region, it's not going to change until it finishes its current cycle. Which, maybe that's what you want. But if you didn't, then we could add a little extra feature here, which is basically, so if we say, uh, if the start or end position change, so we can just literally add those two things together and say, is if the sum of them changes, then we, and, um, and the loop mode is enabled. 
And by the way, I'm going to add a bool in here just for, just in case something, oh, actually, I don't need it. So if both of those things happen, uh, then we will uh, trigger a new click. So now, it immediately jumps. So that's it. Uh, one really weird thing that I discovered just a moment ago while I was trying to finish this video was that I can't encapsulate all this. It won't let me because it thinks that I'm creating an illegal uh, feedback loop, even though the patch works like this. If I just encapsulate, it doesn't work doesn't loop uh which is totally weird i don't think that that should be a thing it's complaining over here in the console so i don't know why that is but um yeah whatever i'll support i'll submit a bug report thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it let me know if you have any questions let me know what you want to see next in this sampler series there's also a bunch of videos on rtt and sequencing and all the kind of more usual things coming soon stay tuned and i'll see you soon bye